Hello everyone, I'm River Fox and this is Grounded. This is the brand new survival and building game by Obsidian Entertainment. It can currently be purchased from the Xbox Game Pass and from the Steam Store on PC. So what is Grounded? Well, it is the little big adventure game where you can complete quests, you can build forts, you can fight giant spiders and many other bugs and insects. Now this game is still currently in early access development so there is lots to come in this game and it is by no means a completed and finished game. Now at the time of making this video Grounded has been out for just a little under one week and already there are over one million players to this game. So if you are among those new players or you are considering purchasing this game this is going to be my top 10 tips for how to survive that little bit longer in the awesome world that is grounded. Okay, now tip number one is I would definitely recommend for your very first time going into Grounded would be to set a single player mode. Now you will notice on the left hand side here that you will have the options of mild which is an easy mode, medium is of course average mode, the WOA is really hard and you will also have an option at the bottom for creative. Now in creative you will not have any spiders, any monsters or anything coming after you. So you will be able to at least explore and get your bearings of what you are doing in the game before you actually start getting attacked by any bugs and critters from the garden. Now you will also have the option that you will be able to select one of four different characters. You can select whichever one you prefer and whichever one will suit you best. Once you have picked that, start your game and you will end up in the garden as your mini character. Now it will initially go into a first person mode and it, it some people will like it in first person I prefer to have it where I can actually see what um, you know my character look like so to do that all you would do is press your down on the down pad go to the very top option here toggle player camera and that will show you um, the um, third person mode so this is where you will spawn and as I said in the creative mode you will not have to worry about any bugs or any um, critters that will be coming after you so you can just run around you can experiment and do whatever you need to do. Now tip number two on our list is the quest line. Now you will have various different quests that you will need to complete in this game. Not everything has been added in straight away. They are adding many new features that planned for the future and there's quite a nice storyline to go with it. So do make sure that you do follow the storyline. They will pop up on the top right of your screen as you progress and go through. Alongside the storyline, you will have these these little um, sort of metal boxes. Now, these are called analyze stations, and every single thing that you pick up, that you harvest, or or that you collect, make sure you do fetch it over and analyze this item. Now, you will have up to three analyze charges for each session, and they do regenerate over time so you will be able to find various different analyze stations around and all you do is you will analyze each and every single thing that you pick up or collect and it will unlock additional features for you until you do analyze them 
it won't unlock everything and you won't have the option for all of the the weapons or the building or anything like that so do make sure that you make definite use of analyze stations wherever possible now tip number three on our list is weapons now you will need lots of various different weapons for different scenarios in the game but one of the most used that you will have is your axe now to do this if you go in to your menu and go into craft and tools and the pebblet axe will be up on the top now in order to craft the axe you will need to have three sprig two pebblets and one piece of woven fiber now to craft these there are always bits everywhere now plant fiber is what you will need for your um, your fibers you can pick these up these are the little sprigs which are these little mini um, sort of plants that are just starting to grow in the garden so you can pick these up from pretty much everywhere there will always be lots of these items around and once you have collected all of the items that you will need like there is a pebble and we've got another one just in case once you have collected all of those items go back in to your backpack go back over to your crafting tools there we go and we can then make this item now you will notice that it does still show the woven fiber in red which means that you can't initially do it but because you have picked up your fiber you can then craft some woven fiber from those fiber plants once you've done that, all of these items will then show in yellow, which then means you can craft that item. Now you can either craft it and it will go into your backpack or you can craft and equip. Once you've done that, you will then have an ax. Now you can then chop at many different things with this majority of things in this game will be able to be destroyed by one weapon or another. Now, you may not have certain weapons just yet for certain things, but you will be able to at least chop majority of things down with your axe. Now, another good weapon that you are going to need is your pebblet spear. And again, this will require sprigs, plant fiber, and pebblets. So we have got these materials already. So we can craft one of these, and a spear is good for prodding, and you can, you can kill majority of enemies and uh, bugs with the spear. Um, one that you may need a little bit later on is a torch. You will need one of those, and you will need a pebblet hammer as well various other different things that you can unlock as you are going through the game so that is your weapons number four on our list is food and water now you will constantly need to regenerate your thirst and your food as well now when you are in creative you don't need to worry about that 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 will not deplete but when you are in a normal single player or multiplayer game then you will constantly need to keep your first up and your energy up as well and to do this there are various different ways now you will find water in many places it is not advisable to drink from the puddles unless you are really desperate for water if you don't drink or you don't eat enough and those deplete down too far then you will die so as an emergency you can drink from the water but if you do you will get this sort of animation on the screen and it will deplete some of your food as well because it's not the nicest water to drink so your best option until you progress through the game is to look on the tops of leaves for water now there are various different ways that you can get this water down you can either come over to the leaf that is holding it and you can hit it 
and the water will fall down. You just come down to it and you can slurp it and that will regenerate your water. Now another option you have if you do have any pebbles is you can actually throw pebbles at the water and that will knock the water down as well. So do try and remember where these areas are because they do tend to appear on the same sort of areas every time. Majority of, of things in this game will respawn in the same sort of areas. And there, there's no sort of set time. It does take a while for things to rejuvenate and, and reappear. Uh, but even when you knock structures down, they will reappear as well. Now for food, which is your next bar across here, your um, the one that looks like it's got a bit of a chicken leg uh, on it, that is your food bar. And when that depletes, you will need to eat. Now a good source of quick food and health is mushrooms. Now, if you find the mushrooms, you can store these. They don't tend to go off and they will regenerate a certain amount of your health as you are going as well. So that is your mushrooms. Now, another thing that you can do for food is you will have a lot of little creatures around as well. Now, like we've, we've got some of these. Now, they're not really ideal to eat but you can get gnat corpses as well there are certain things that you can um you can get and cook later on which will help you but initially for your very first sort of gameplays then i would definitely recommend checking out wherever the mushrooms are they will be your best bet Number five on our list is a base. Now you will need to make yourself a base. And while you're in creative mode, you can literally, you can make any bases that you like. You will have everything that you will ever need in order to make a base. And you can quite easily just make a simple, simple base. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. If I can just get this to place, there we go, and let's place that there. Now this is by no means the quickest, um, the best looking base, but you can at least make a simple base that you will be able to go into. And yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't want to place a door at the moment, but you you can make a simple base here. I would recommend putting a door on to keep the uh, the spiders and bugs out, but that will be your base. Now there is another thing that you will need to make, which is quite vital in my opinion, and that is a lean to. Now a lean to will act as a both a bed and a respawn point. You can set the respawn point there, which whenever you die, you will always respawn back at that. But also you will notice there is day and night. So when it starts getting really dark like this, you need to go over to the bed and sleep. Now you can only sleep between the hours of 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. So it's not quite there yet. We've got about 15 minutes of in-game time before um, we can go back to sleep but the the days aren't that you know they're not that long so five minutes is probably um, about one or two minutes in in normal time so if we go back in we got five minutes to go now before we can sleep now if you needed to you can make yourself a torch so that you can actually see where you are and once you make a torch that will give you a bit of light there as well but we should be able to go in now to sleep there we go and once you do go to sleep then you will wake up and it will then be morning time again and it starts to get daylight and it will start to um, to get brighter as the day goes on so that is your your base now this is just a, a basic simple base i'm going to pop some uh, footage up on the screen of my son and i uh where we went into creative mode and built this big massive base 
but yeah ju just initially just something something simple and and easy that you can make just for your first night or two until you can find somewhere nice and safe and secure that you can you can make it if you can make a base up on top of a large rock or somewhere that bugs are not going to get to then even better now tip number seven on our list is markers now you will need to learn how to make markers and as you as you start playing through the game you'll get more opportunity to do this but as soon as you can make markers i definitely recommend you start doing it if you go all the way over to your utilities and come down to trail marker and again you will need certain materials to do it but once you have all of your materials you can place your marker down and you can set that as whatever you like so for this one it is going to be a house as this is where our home is and you can set the color as well and then that way wherever you are on your map you will always be able to see that marker so even if you are far and far away you will be able to see that marker and you will be able to know exactly what that is and you if you if you've gone out hunting or, or investigating you will know which way is home which is always a good thing especially as things get dark now you can you can make these markers for any different thing you can mark it for special places you visited you can mark food or water um, you can even mark it that is bugs or danger or, or anything and some that I do tend to set this dandelion which can be extremely useful if you find dandelion farms like this then it can be extremely useful to know exactly where they are for quick resources and quick materials now tip number eight in this game is height a lot of the bugs that you will meet will not be able to get you if you are up high and you can climb a lot of various different things like you can you can climb all the way up to the top of this this tree this is bush or whatever it is this plant and the higher up you are the more you will be able to see your surroundings and the less chance that you will have of being eaten or got at by other um, creatures and other bugs so it's always a good idea to make sure that you do go up as high as you can search hunt around and see what is going on but do bear in mind unless you are in creative that you will take fall damage so even if you are at the very top of this plant here you if you fall down there you will dead you are you are gone and you will have to start over but as i said not to worry if you die you can respawn you will either respawn back at your original spawn point or if you've made a bed down there you can go and respawn at the bed and wherever you die your backpack will be dropped there so if you do die then you can just go back over sometimes you'll have to fight some bugs or whatever if you've you know got killed by them but you can go back over there and you can collect everything from your backpack and i don't think at the moment that there is any set time as to how long that backpack stays there i mean i've i've been in one of my games and i've had a backpack there for four or five days because there's no way I'm going back there to those five spiders to get it. But you can, if you want, you can go back and get all your materials. But height is the key in this game. Now, tip number nine on my list is armor. Now, you will also be able to craft various different armors. And if we go over to your workbench gear, you will have various different items of sort of clothing that you can wear. 
and they all have their purpose. Gas mask, there's certain areas where it's very gassy and poisonous and if you go in there you can die. So you can make a gas mask so you can go into those areas. But the clover items are like your basic armors. They will give you a little bit of protection against some animals and, and some bugs. Then you have acorn um, armors, which are, of course, a bit more defensive as well. Then you have ant armors, which uh, again are a bit higher up. And eventually you will have ladybug faceplates and, and um, armors. You will have bee armors and there are spider armors as well. They all have their own different um, uses and benefits. Ones that I would try and get if you can would be to make and craft some ant armors and use those. They will make you a lot stronger against the bugs and you will also it will increase the amount of items that you can carry. Because things like this, like the grass plank, uh, planks, now you can only hold a certain amount. You can hold about uh, five, I think, there. Once you have got your armors on, then you will be able to carry a lot more and you will be able to use a lot more of it. So it is definitely a good idea to make yourself some armors. And my tenth and final tip for Grounded is save. No matter what you are doing, wherever you are going, regularly save. Now, you do have an option in your settings where you can set it how often it will save. You can have it to set anything uh, from five minutes up to 20 minutes per save. And you can also determine how many actual save files you want it to keep before it starts overwriting. I've set mine down to two just so I can sort of keep a track on which save files I've got. Uh, because the only the only thing I think that could be a problem is Currently, there is no way to actually rename your saves. I'm hoping that this is something that they do add in at a later date because it will be extremely useful because sometimes you can quite easily get confused as which ones are which. Like this is my main game which I've been playing um, quite a lot and I've got two saves of that just so I know I've got it there. But these are different ones which I've been going through and sorting with this video today. And they all look extremely similar. So I'm hoping they do add an option in that we can rename them. But for now, then your latest game save, the latest one that you've been into, will always be on the top. And it will have an auto save or it will have a logout save, which every time you log out of the game, it will automatically save, or it will have saves that you have done. So this is one that I've saved. That is my I logged out of the game, finished for the night save, and that one is an auto 20 minute save. So it's a good idea whenever you're doing anything. If you're gonna go off fighting some, some bugs, save before you do. That way, if you do get into any problems, if you get struggling and you're stuck and you end up dying, then you can just go back and load a previous save and it will save you so much time. Now, if you are wondering just what sort of things you can do with this game, now I've, I've spent a good few hours doing these various different things and, and setting everything up and getting markers set everywhere but I still have a long long way to go but I have at least I've started making a, a tidy base here which I've started getting some strong defenses around I haven't finished building everything yet but this is this is my house I've, I've got ornaments I've got lights I've got beds and storage 
and yeah it it can there are so many different things you, that you can do and make with this game i've i've got a mushroom farm here which i can collect mushrooms from it daily i've got a water catcher catch water so i've i've got lots of different things set up but yeah it is by far my most favorite thing to play at the moment i am absolutely loving this game grounded and i do hope that you guys do as well if you do don't forget to hit that like down below smash that subscribe before you go if you turn on the notification bell you'll always get updated of all my content when it comes out whether it be grounded or fortnite save the world i do stream quite regularly now over on twitch so make sure you check out the link in the description down below you can follow me over on twitter if uh, you need to but until the next video i hope you do have a lovely day and stay safe my friends